Hi everyone, so this is going to be uh, the video on glycolysis, which is phase one of cell respiration. And so here's some AP language for you guys that I will just skip through and you can read that on your own time. Uh, so glycolysis comes from the Greek word of glucus, meaning sweet, and leucis, meaning rupture. So quite literally, glycolysis means sweet rupture or breaking down glucose. Okay, so in the process of glycolysis, we take one six carbon sugar, which is glucose, and convert it into two three carbon sugars, which are pyruvate, or sometimes they can be referred to as pyruvic acid. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, and it's divided into two phases, energy investment and energy payoff phases. That means that we have to use ATP, but we also generate ATP as well. And then finally, glycolysis can produce ATP without the presence of oxygen, so it's, an, it's an anaerobic metabolic process, uh, which is really neat because that signifies to us that it probably evolved early on in the history of life before oxygen in the atmosphere was present. So in other words, both aerobic and anaerobic organisms um, can benefit from the process of glycolysis. So here's our overview diagram that I will often be referring to. Um, to make sure that you guys know where each process is happening within the cell. So in this diagram, the beige portion right here is your mitochondrion, and then the white surrounding the mitochondrion is the cytoplasm. Okay, so cell respiration, we have technically four processes, although a lot of uh, scientific literature and textbooks and things like that will refer to three phases of respiration, but technically there's four. So we have glycolysis, which is what this video is about, pyruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, okay? So glycolysis, that's what I'm gonna focus on. Glycolysis is taking one molecule of glucose, breaking it down into two um, molecules of pyruvate or pyruvic acid. We also generate two ATP in this process through substrate level phosphorylation, which we will go over what that is. And then this whole process happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, so before I get into uh, the step-by-step -step in glycolysis, I do want to address the energy investment versus energy payoff phase um, concept that you see in glycolysis and in the rest of respiration. So uh, energy investment and energy payoff, you can think about it like this. If you were to gamble or place a bet on something, you're doing that with the hopes of... Um, winning money, right? So if you go to gamble and you let's say you want to win $100,000, well, you can't win that $100,000 unless you place a $20 bet up front, so to speak, right? So in that situation, in order to win some money, you have to spend some money. Same thing works for entrepreneurship. Anybody who's trying to start a small business, in order to make a profit, they have to spend money up front, right? They have to spend money for products. They have to spend money on employees, marketing, whatnot, right? It's business 101. In order to make a profit, you have to spend money, okay? So that's the idea of energy investment versus energy payoff. In order to actually make energy through the whole process of respiration, we do have to input some energy in the beginning, okay? So I bring that up um, because I know that's a misconception. As we go through this, um, a lot of students think, well, isn't the process to make energy? Why are we using energy, right? Okay, so for glycolysis, we're breaking down glucose into pyruvates and ATP. So for the first uh, step here, we have one molecule of glucose that you see, and it is, we're using, so already we are using ATP, um, one molecule of ATP, and we're breaking it down into ADP and an inorganic phosphate. Uh, we're also using an enzyme called hexokinase to phosphorylate the glucose molecule. Okay, so in this step, we have glucose, that's a six carbon sugar, and then we're adding a phosphate group to the sixth carbon of glucose, and we call that glucose six phosphate. So the idea of using one ATP molecule and the enzyme of hexokinase, that's what we call substrate level phosphorylation because you are phosphorylating the substrate by using an enzyme. Okay, hexokinase, um, the ACE, meaning that it's an enzyme, but then more specifically, a kinase, so anytime you see K-I-N-A-S-E, a kinase, that means that its function is to add a phosphate group to the substrate, meaning it's a phosphorylating enzyme, okay? 
Then we move on from glucose 6-phosphate. It will isomerize into fructose 6-phosphate. And so if you remember from our organic chemistry, chapters 4 and 5, um, an isomer is something that has the same molecular formula um, but a different structural formula, right? So glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate, they have the same molecular formulas, but their structural formulas are different. And so that's what's happening in this stage. Then from the third stage, um, you see that we're using another ATP, so we're putting in energy, we're investing energy in to change or to phosphorylate uh, fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay, and so there's our other little phosphate group and our other little phosphate group. Okay, now this is all happening through the very, very important enzyme phosphofructokinase. It's extremely important. Okay, PFK. So on your posters right now, make sure I would write PFK equals BFF two stars. Okay, it is extremely important enzyme. The reason why is it's an allosteric enzyme, so it can regulate um, the respiration process, meaning if there's too much ATP in the cell, then we can inactivate uh, that enzyme. Okay, so ATP can act as an allosteric inhibitor. Or if we have too little ATP, um, then we can turn on that enzyme. And when we get to the citric acid cycle, I will uh, refer back to this and refer back to what's which molecule specifically is considered the allosteric activator, okay? So then when we get here, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, that will divide into two 3-carbon sugars, okay, that will um, isomerize between each other. And then the molecule that actually moves on throughout the rest of the, the glycolysis process is G3P, and that's this one, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is going to be extremely important because um, you'll see that again in photosynthesis. So, make sure that you remember this particular uh, molecule. Okay? What's also important about G3P is because so far we have been investing energy and we haven't been making any energy. But when G3P is oxidized um, into 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate and phosphorylated, um, we have to, we have to, we make energy in order to do that. So the energy that we're making, it's not in the form of ATP, it's actually in the form of another type of energy currency molecule, which is called NAD+. Plus. So anyways, we're taking two NAD pluses, um, and the NAD plus will carry a very highly energized electron uh, that will become reduced into NADH, and then that whole process allows for the oxidation of G3P as well. And then remember this um, energy that we're making here because that's going to come back at a later time uh, when we go through the electron transport chain. Okay, so make sure you keep track of the energy that we're, that we're making through NADH. Okay. So now, um, as we go through the other steps, which, you know, it's not important for you to remember all the different names of the molecules and the enzymes, and, you know, that's, that's beyond the scope of, of the AP Bio course. But I do want to draw your attention. Uh, there's these little twos at the upper left-hand corner of these steps that were not on the previous steps, right? And so where are those coming from? Well, if you remember... On this step right here, where we separate from energy investment to energy payoff phase, um, the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate was actually split into two separate molecules, three carbon molecules, right? So that means that everything from that point forward is doubled, okay? Because they're isomerizing, but the molecule that actually moves through the process is G3P. So after this step, we have two G3P molecules that move through. So then you have two of these, two of these, two of these, two of these, and then finally two pyruvates, okay? So um, what is the most important thing for AP? Because like I said, you don't have to memorize all the names of the molecules and the enzymes and things like that. But what's the most important thing for AP Bio is the summary box, and that's what this is. And this is what's going to go on your poster, okay? So you have to make sure that you understand what are the inputs of the reaction and what are the outputs of the reaction, how much energy is used and how much energy is produced. And then finally, 
where does the process of glycolysis happen, okay? So um, again, we use, in the energy investment phase, we use two ATP to break down one molecule of glucose and phosphorylate it, okay? Then we produce four ATP and two NADHs um, in the process of breaking this molecule of glucose down even more and rearranging the bonds even more um, to two, three carbon sugars of pyruvate and then two water molecules, okay? So in summary then, uh, here's your net gain. So we start with one molecule of glucose and we end with two molecules of pyruvate. So one six carbon sugar, two three carbon sugars, plus two water molecules, okay? In the process, we um, formed four ATPs, but we used two in the beginning. So our net gain of ATP for glycolysis is two, okay? And then for the same idea, our net gain of NADH molecules is two as well, okay? And then finally, oh, um, let me go back to our overview diagram, okay? So finally, I, you need to understand that glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm, not in the mitochondria. It's happening in the cytoplasm. Okay, so that's it for glycolysis, and so make sure that you pick up with a pyruvate oxidation video.